Welcome to Winning Wall Street's Money. Help support my channel. We need to get to 1,000 subscribers pretty much as soon as possible. So then I go live streaming because YouTube policy that won't let me go live until I have 1,000 subscribers. Thank you to all the folks out there that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you have not yet, please take this moment now with helping me. Click subscribe. Next, click the bell. And next, click all. This helps you receive a notification when I post my next videos. Plus, click the thumbs up button and every time you watch my videos. If you got value from this video, if this was helpful, then please consider sharing a small monetary donation to my channel by going below and clicking on either my Patreon or PayPal links. If you join my Patreon page, then you'll get early access to these videos 24 hours before they're posted on the YouTube and lots more. If you prefer just leaving a small tip, click on PayPal. Either way, then you get that warm sense of satisfaction years down the line knowing that you helped me become a successful YouTuber. Monday, March 14th, 4.20 p.m. New York time. Big event this Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Federal Reserve will either leave interest rates alone or change them. That's what's expected to happen, one or the other. We'll look at the U.S. Treasury yields to give us maybe some insight, what's been happening, where we are, how we got there. Looking at the 30-year, and these are weekly candles. So right now, we're at all-time high for the year. We broke above the high of last week. Yep. That's putting pressure on raising interest rates. Now we're looking at the 10-year, also all-time high for the year. And the five-year. All-time high for the year. What businesses, what sectors get affected by higher interest rates? Well, let's go look at the equity indexes. They're not all the same. Look at the go-to index, S&P 500. Look at that. It's a yellow candle. So it hasn't taken out the low or the high last week yet. It's inside a range, indecision. And NASDAQ 100, yep, it took out the low of last week. It's even more bearish than the S&P 500. The Dow Transport, sorry, the Dow Jones, look at that, also inside candle. The Russell 2000 took out the low of last week. The Russell 2000 is 2,000 small companies versus the NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones 30, and the S&P 500. Those are humongous companies. Yep. So the Russell 2000 is affected much more by raising interest rates. Those small companies have a harder time raising capital several ways from just getting bank loans or bonds. They have to pay out more returns because they're not big where they can fund themselves or negotiate as well. Got it? So they're going to affect more. Again, so if the Fed raises interest rates come that meeting, well, expect this to be hurt even more. So again, if you're bearish bias, this, then that's what you should be focused on. First, if you're less the other way. The Dow transports look at that inside, inside the prior. And the Dow utilities, it, dividend paying stocks. Yep. So this, look at that. We haven't taken out the higher low. Interesting. Again, when people are concerned that they don't think the stock market is going to grow as well in growth, they typically go to dividend paying stocks. That's what the utility is known for because they have higher paying dividends than other companies, but it's inside the range. So right off the bat, yep, the NASDAQ 100 technology and the Russell 2000 are getting beat down. Let's go to the S&P 500 sectors where there's, there we go, 11 sectors inside the S&P 500. XLK. Look at that it's also beat down new low for the year xlv inside xlf wow made a higher 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 low 
XLF, the financials, the big banks, sure. You raise interest rates, won't their profits be better? They should be, unless they made bad investments in Eastern Europe or maybe in Asia. Those bad investments will be disclosed if they're not already been. XLY, inside candle. XLC, uh, new low for the year. XLI, also inside candle. XLP, inside candle, after that huge sell-off last week. XLE, inside candle, I'm not surprise. Yep, not surprise is all the way up here. It's energy. XLU, also inside candle, holding above that 70. XLRE, inside candle, the real estates. Yep. So understand if they raise interest rates come this week and when that gets followed through in the institutional businesses that raise interest rates, typically people that are concerned of seeing this happening will pre into that or prior to that, go finance something that's expensive, such as a new car or refinance a car or home because they're concerned interest rates going to go higher. So that being said, done, you can actually start seeing weeks, months, not, not months, but sooner, days, weeks, that certain stock sectors are going faster because there's more demand for their products. It could be the oil industry, something that's typical people finance. So we'll see what happens. The, uh, what could hurt also is the real estate. Yep, real estate. So this is indecision right now. High interest rates takes people out of the equation, possibly buying homes. Yep, so this could get hurt. And what gets hurt if real estate gets hurt? Well, maybe less people are buying products for those new homes because less people have them at Home Depot, Lowe's. Yep, triple down effect. XLB, inside candle. Let's go look at the Feng Plus. Again, each of these candles a week, just the first trading day done. Apple, yep. New low for the year. Inside the range of last year, just shy of breaking below that 150. Microsoft, inside candle. And this is a perfect example. Microsoft, worldwide usage of the product and services, also has government contracts. Yeah easier for them to negotiate for financing versus those small companies. Let's just say maybe GameStop, if they're even still on the Russell 2000. Amazon, inside candle. Facebook, new low for the year. I guess they need to buy something better to goose themselves up. Maybe they'll do a reverse split. Maybe they'll buy, I don't know, Discord or Telegram or something. Yeah or come up with a new product or service. Well, wait, the elections are this year. The primaries, again, Facebook makes money on advertisement, Google. Yep, so again, later this year, you can start seeing these companies potentially turning around. Google, Google, inside candle. Massive demand zone down here where the buyers have been stepping in. Let's see if that holds. Tesla, low for the week, took out the low of last week. And Coming back to detest. Yep, it's like a retest for the low of the year. Even though this is a bearish pin bar, it's getting retested. So if you're bearish, that's one to look to be trading. Mm -hmm. November Victor Delta Alpha inside candle near the lows of the year, also in this demand zone area. Netflix, new low for the year. Boy, they are struggling. Wow. Huge sell off since the first week of the year. All sell off mostly. Wow. Let's go deeper, see how bad it is from the prior. Yep, already took out the lows of last year, coming back into the lows all the way back here, 2020. Wow. Let's look at Disney. Yep, same Disney, all time low this year, took out the low of last year. So is it the content? The subscription services, where are they losing their money? What are they doing wrong? Yeah, look at who the board member is, who the CEO is. Is it the same one that took the company up to highs? Or was this just 
people temporarily because of pandemic, and then they unloaded their subscription. Hmm. Bravo Alpha, Bravo Alpha, Chinese company, all time low for the year. Let's go further back. Wow, it's taking a lot of lows. Let's go even further back. Let's go five years. Yeah, but taking out the five years. Let's go to 10 years. Oh, better yet, let's just go to max, put it on monthly. So that means each of these candles is the monthly. Yeah, it's ready in the range all the way back from 2016. Wow. Yep. So it didn't just start this year nor last year. It started all the way back in 2020, that sell-off last month. No, those last two months there. Yeah, that was on November. That was December. Massive sell-off. So it's been occurring now. Let's include a little view of currencies. Why? Because the Fed, if the Fed raises interest rates, that has an effect on the U.S. currency. Yep, it typically makes U.S. dollars stronger. So we're looking at the weeklies. Euro's inside the range. Japanese yen sold off. So Japanese sold off, took out the low of last week. Again, that's giving strength to the U.S. dollar. British pound, lower, giving strength to the U.S. dollar. Canadian dollar, inside. Swiss franc, lower, giving strength against the U.S. dollar. Australian dollar, lower. So of all these major currencies against the U.S. dollar, majority of them took out the lows of last week, but not the euro, not the Canadian. And let's finish this off by looking at the U.S. dollar. There we go, US dollar inside the range. It's a tiny, tiny range. We're gonna finish this off by looking at Bitcoin, tiny, tiny range, massive below the highs of this year, below the highs of last year. Yep, just been selling off.